All right, we're going to look at the isometric view of uh, this object over here drawn in these three views. It's a third angle orthographic projection, and they've asked you to do it at a scale two is to one, which means that you're doubling all of these measurements when you draw the isometric view. Right, what I did was I realized that this, uh, these three views are done at a scale one is to one, which means that if I just double that, I can draw it out uh, at a scale one is to two over here, and I'm going to use the measurements straight off this drawing just so you can see where you're getting your measurements from. Obviously, if it says 10 over here, you must set your pair of dividers to 20 or whatever it is that you, 26, just double it when you get across here. I'm going to take the measurements straight off this view in order to place onto this, um, this isometric view that I'm going to do now, um, just to save some time. Right. To start with, we need to draw a fish tank. Where do I get my measurements for my fish tank? Well, I've got my length, the length of it I can get off this base over here. I've got the width of the object that I can get off my left view over here. And I can also get my height very easily off my left view over there. So I'm going to take those three measurements very quickly. My length, I'm going to take that from there to there. I'm going to draw a line out at 30 degrees over here. There it is. And I'm going to measure off the length onto that line. Right. Let's just draw that in with a red pen so that you can see it. That would be a construction line that I did there. I'm going to take the width now. The width is that distance over there. Take that, pop that over there. And I can draw a line out with the width of the object. I'm going to take a line going straight up over here, and I'm going to measure off the height of it. There's my height over there. Take that across there, splotch that in there, and I'm going to just draw in a line going up there. Right, once I've done that, I can draw construction lines going across there. A construction line going across there, line going up there, construction line going up there, a construction line going up here. Let's just draw the fish tank in. And there we go. There is my fish tank. I know that my Drawing is definitely going to fit on the page because my fish tank fits onto the page. Right, the next thing that I'm going to do is to draw some auxiliary views. There is a square that I need and I also need this hexagon. Right, what I need to do over here is um, I take my 30 degree set square, I've drawn out the base of the, um, the hexagon over here and I can draw in a line going out at at 60 degree there, draw a line going out at 60 degrees there. I then measure off that distance for, for my base. There we go. Swing that around, mark that point off over there, draw a line across so that I have those two lines at exactly the same height. And I then go over here, draw another construction line going out over there and another construction line going out over here. How do I get the stopping points there? Well, if I draw a line going up there, it's going to in, um, intersect over there and the same story over there. And I can then finish off this hexagon. Right. After that, I then take my pair of compasses. It says the square is, uh, it's got 12 millimeter sides. All right. So, well, 12 millimeters. Let's just have a look at how I get this. If I take a line over here from the center, you'll note that this is an isosceles triangle. Okay, there's 45 degrees there, 45 degrees there, which means that that length and that length are equal. If they say that this is 12 millimeters across, well, that distance from there to there would be six. Multiply it by the scale, and you end up with a 12 millimeter gap, which I'm going to measure off with a pair of compasses, there's the 12 millimeter gap. I come over here and I draw a circle, right? 
draw some center lines through the circle and then draw tangents to the circle's edges using a 45 degree set square. There we go. And I can get my square with the center lines going through it, which are going to be really useful when drawing this thing into my isometric view. Right, there are my two auxiliary views done. I can now come across here and start looking at um, drawing this auxiliary, uh, this isometric drawing from here. I've got these edges over here, which I can definitely see on my front view. Okay, so I'm going to draw all of those edges straight onto my front view. Take my pair of dividers over here, and it says that I go up to that point over there. That's 15 plus the 5, which is 20 multiplied by 2, which would be 40 millimeters up there. And I can draw that line going straight up at the back there. All right, sorry, there's a notch in my board. All right, I then take this measurement over here. Um, uh, it says that I have a 16 millimeter story going up there, okay? And if I swing that around, well, that's 16 millimeters over there. You can see that that's going at 45 degrees. So I can take that measurement over there and I can take that across to a point over there. So 16 millimeters up there, 16 millimeters going over there, and I can then draw in that 45 degree angle. Right, let's just have a look at that idea of drawing that 45 degree angle. Note the angle that I'm able to draw it at. It's that 30 degree. There we go. Okay, once I've got that, um, I can draw a line going across over here. And obviously it comes down at that 30 degrees. Note the angle that I've got this set at. There it is. I'm using that 60 degree, and you can see that I've got that look as if it was 45 degrees. Right, once I've got that, I drop a line down over there, and I take this measurement um, that they give over here. It says 10 millimeters going up over there, and 10 millimeters coming down over there, so I can take that measurement. Note that measurement. Is that measurement over there. Measure that off. Draw a line coming down and draw a line coming across over here. Right, drop the line down over here. I then go across this distance over here, the 24 plus the six. Pop that in over there. And I'm going to draw in that line going across there. Needs to go up a dash there. It says that I go up five millimeters here. Pop that in over there. Draw that. It says that I need six millimeters from the back over there. So I go to that back corner, six millimeters there. Draw a line going up over there. Draw a line going across to that line that I just drew drop a line down and finish off that over there. Right, um, it then tells me that I've got this hexagonal shape over here. That's a hexagonal hole that goes right the way through. You can see that by the hidden detail going back there. Um, I need to find the center of that. So I drop a center line down. Don't be shy about drawing center lines. They get you marks, you may as well put them in. There we go. I then come across to my auxiliary view. You will see that I've got center lines over here. I'm going to measure out that distance on my auxiliary view. And I come across here, mark that off over there, go to the center, mark that off over there, and draw two construction lines coming out there and over there. Go back to my auxiliary view. You can see the distance from that center line to the corner of the Hexagon, it's half the length of the side, so I can take that down over here, mark that off over there, turn that round, mark that off over there, come down here, mark that off over there, turn that round, 
mark that off over there. And I have got the length of the two sides of my hexagon, the top and the bottom. And I'll come back to the auxiliary view. That distance from the center to that point over there, same as that. I can go to my center over here, mark that off over there, mark that off over there, and I can draw in my hexagon. Right, that there, that there, from that there, and from that to there. Right, once I've got that, well, I can finish this hexagon off by drawing a line going in there and drawing a line going in there. All right, those are the two lines that you need to show that you've got a hole going through this object. Okay, um, from here I can take this apex over here. You can see how far back the apex goes um, right the way to that point over there. And uh, I've just noticed a mistake on the actual question over here. I'm just going to take a line going straight back at 30 degrees over there. You'll see over here there's a length that goes back over there to that point over there. Mark that off. And I can draw in this line going back to that mark. There it is. Okay, uh, you'll note that they made a line over there. That line over there doesn't actually exist. If you look at their, their answer, there is no line over there. So what they were doing, drawing a line onto this view, I'm not quite sure. Right, okay, let's take a line going over there. Um, and I can now draw in this distance. Um, it says that I've got that 10 and that 14 going back to that point over there. Go to this corner over here, mark that off, and I can draw in that line going from there to there. Draw that line going from there to there, and there. And I can do that now. Right, I've got a line that goes straight down from that corner. So I can take a line coming straight down from that corner and you'll see that that links up with this line that comes across from here. So um, I then have a sloping line that comes down over here. Well, first of all, I need to find where that point is on my isometric view. So what do I need? I need to take a line going across first over here. I can finish this base up over here as well. There we go. Um, oh dear, I just made a bit of a mess there. There is no line that's going to come in over there and you'll see why now. Right, um, you can see that there is this distance of 10 over there. Let me just take that me measurement of 10. Note that 10 over there, take it across, take it down and you can see that distance of 10 over there. So. I need to quickly measure that off from there to there. And I can take a line going up over here. And I measure off, it says that I go 10 millimeters up over here. I can measure off the 10 millimeters going up over there. Or if I wanted to, I could have drawn a line going from that point up to there at, th at that uh, 30 degrees. That would give me 10 millimeters going up there. Um, right, once I've got that, I can draw a line going across like that. And drop a line down over there. Drop a line down going over there. I then need to go horizontal across like that. Let's take that across, horizontal. Take that across, horizontal. And it says that it's again 10 millimeters. If I draw a line, coming from that point across like that, that measurement, because that is 10 millimeters over there, um, I will have 10 millimeters over there, which is the measurement that I need. I could measure it if you wanted to. There's 10 millimeters over there, and note 10 millimeters over there. Right, measure that off. There we go. Take a line going back over here. 
there. Draw that line over there. And now we've got the two lines that need to intersect with those two points. That one over there and this one over here. Right, once that's done, I need to create this line, the sloping line over here, going down to a point somewhere over there. How do I get that? Well, the method that I'd like you to see over here, I draw a construction line over there. I'm going to take my two set squares. I'm going to line this set square up with that angle over there. And I'm going to slide it across. Draw that same line. Note they are parallel to each other. Once I've got that, I come back over here and I can draw in a line going over there. It then goes down over there and I can draw a line coming across from here. If I've drawn accurately, I should find that that corner links up with that and I can draw in a line going down to there. Right. The last thing that I need to do is to find the square. You can see that that square needs to be placed in the middle of this. Um, how, do, how would I find the middle of this thing? Um, well, I just draw a little construction line going from corner to corner over there. Construction line going from corner to corner over there. That gives me the center of this little face over here. And I can then draw in my center lines. As I say, don't be shy with your center lines. You get marks for them, so you may as well draw them in. Center line going that way. Center line going that way. All right, once I've got those center lines in place, I can come across to my auxiliary view up here, take that measurement from the center to the corner of that square, bring it down here, knock that measurement in there, knock that measurement in there, knock that measurement in there, and knock that measurement in there. Right, I can now draw in my square. Note that, that, and I can drop a line going down there and down there. Okay, um, once I've got that in place, um, I then need to have a look at the lines going through here. Right, that is a little tunnel that's going through there. You can see the tunnel going through there. And uh, that's more or less everything. Um, if you look over here, these there should be hidden detail going through there, hidden detail going through there, because there's a hole that goes through with that square, but you can't really see that, so you don't need to worry about it. Right, there's the drawing done.